And now it's time for someone who needs no introduction, so I won't even try to introduce him. <laughs> it's our pastor, Reverend John Scott, the beloved, to bring us his loving encouragement for this morning. Reverend John. Thank you, Vance, and good morning. You absolutely, how, how did uh, Vance refer to you? Magnificent works of heart. I love that. Let us all say together, I am a magnificent work of heart. I am a magnificent work of heart. And that is true whether you are in the sanctuary you are or enjoying the live stream the love stream at home. It is true of everybody everywhere on the planet. Each is a work of heart. And you know, when I go into an art gallery to look at works of art, there are some that resonate with me, some I immediately gravitate towards. In Jamaica, we say spirit tech, and some, well, I reserve judgment on them. They may not be my kind of, of, of work. But each one is a unique individualization of the creator, don't? And so that, that, that just is just a wonderful metaphor for me, that you are a work of heart, and that all that you are has been created by the master, artist, musician, architect, mathematician, whatever profession you can think of, that presence and power within us is the master that has honed us to do a unique and unstoppable and beautiful work in this world. And so, you know, my friends, I was thinking about this on one of my early morning walks in the neighborhood to which I have recently moved. And I greeted one of the groundsmen who had just begun um, doing some work on the grass verge. And I paused to thank him for the the wonderful job he, he, he and his colleagues uh, are doing of taking care of the gardens. And he said, thank you, sir. And as I turned to continue my walk, he said, you're a minister, don't? <laughs> I said, how oh, you know? Somebody tell you? He said, no, I see it in you. Wow. wow. That just, it, it just, you know, <laughs> when I leave the, 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 this place, the, four to six Fairway Avenue, Kingston 10 in the evenings. I need to remind myself that I can't take off that which I have committed myself to. I can't take off the minister hat. Any more than I can take off the godson hat. I have to be what I was created to be. And it's not the first time someone out of the clear blue, a stranger has said, you're a minister, don't, or you're a pastor, sir and then sometimes continue to tell me the most intimate details about their lives, out of the blue, or apparently out of the blue because there are no mistakes. And when you wake up in the mornings and you say, here am I, Father, send me, then you're going to be sent and go where the Spirit take you. You know, I've told you this story uh, before, but I want to, to repeat it here because it's, it's such a powerful statement to me of how this, this energy that we carry within us and that we emanate works. Down at the University of Tower Street, which is my pet name for the prison at, here in Kingston where we do the program titled What's Your Thinking? Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. I always, at the first class of the 12 class series, make a promise to the participants. I say, look, I will be here every Tuesday morning except there is some natural phenomenon like a hurricane, or if I'm on a slab in the morgue down the road. Otherwise, I'll be here. And I thank God that in the almost nine years that we have been ministering there, I have been able to keep that promise. You can clap. And so, my friends, the, the story that I know I've shared with you is that one Tuesday morning I got there on time as usual. And sometimes you go and you go through the, what is called the main gate, you go through the processing, and the people there know you and they say, Come along, Rev, and 
it doesn't take any time. And sometimes if you have a new enthusiastic um, century, you go through, them go through you with a fine tooth comb. So I was preparing myself because I didn't recognize the young man there. And the superintendent came out and said, morning, Rev. And I said, as soon as he said, morning, Rev, to me, like he knew me, the sentry stood up, you know, straightened up himself. So he said, you're not going to have a class today. I said, you mean you are not going to have a class today, um, Soup? He said, no, the, the warders are on a bit of industrial, um, they're having an industrial conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and so there won't be any class. I said, okay, I, I know for you all uh, an a, a amicable settlement of whatever the issues are. And please tell the, the, the guys for me that I'll be here next week. Knowing full will that nobody going to tell them nothing because they don't count them as having to know anything but lockdown no, get up no, eat no, whatever. But anyway, I went my way. Next, the next Tuesday, as soon as class convened, a young man in the group said, Reverend, think you did say that only a natural occurrence like a hurricane or the mog would have stopped you from coming on a Tuesday. Which of those was the case last week? <laughs> so I laughed. And before I could answer, another participant said he was here. So I said, oh, you know, if the superintendent tell you, if the superintendent don't tell me nothing. I said, well, how you know? You can see me, you can see me from where you are on the north block down in the reception area. He said, no. He said, I know when you come on this property. I said, well, how you know? He said, when you come onto this facility, that's the word he used, the energy changes. Now, that's a very strong statement coming from a participant in a workshop who I've only known a few days and I decided to pursue it. So I said, that's an interesting statement. What do you mean by energy? How it look, how it feel, what, what is it? And there was a long, long silence. And then he leaned forward in his chair and he pointed at me and he said, it looks like love. It looks like love. Wow. Woman looking in the mirror and said, this is what love looks like. <laughs> but friends, that is the energy that we transmit. And you know, I've abandoned the, the, the lesson plan for the class because that was an opportunity to take us down another path. And I said to him and to them, to the class, because they all said, yeah, and we have I taught them this thing that they, instead of clapping, they sparkle, which is the sound of a thousand men clapping. And I said, you know, the master teacher, Yeshua Bar Joseph, uh, a.k.a. Jesus, gave us a new commandment. He said, a new commandment I give you. Him not just the Old Testament, you know. But he said, I give you a new, is really a demandment. It is that ye love one another. Hear him, even as me. Love one another. Wow. Love one another, even as I have loved you. I know business what you did. I don't business where you come from. I don't care whether you come off a high table or whether you've you grow up under dire circumstances. I don't business if you were a victim of abuse. I don't care where you are coming from. I love you. And the commandment is, let me see if we can find the, 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 um, the Bible reference for those of you who like to look up. I made certain, I, look, I did it, yes. Um, it is John, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it's John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. So that is my, the title of my encouragement this morning. I come this morning, my friends, to give you here in the sanctuary and you 
magnificent works of art on the World Wide Web that are tuned in this morning, a new commandment, or rather to reiterate the new demandment given by Yeshua by Joseph the way sure. Love one another. Even as Jesus loved and loves you, even as God loves you, and even as I, John the Beloved, love each and every one of you. And you know, friends, if I haven't learned anything else in my 19 years of ministry, the thing that I have learned most of all is to keep my heart open so that even when others are angry or displeased with me and they don't like how me set or what me stay or what I stand for, I can still be in a loving space to just say in my heart, look, this is a God picking just like me. And so we are brother and sister or brother and brother. And God cannot be divided against God. The family is one. There is one presence and one power. And when we, we, we acknowledge, realize, and latch on to that amazing truth that we are divine, we had an affirmation of divine love this morning, that is the essence of our being. And when we know that, we begin to relate to others the way Jesus, the way Shoa, related. And there is nothing we can do because you begin to realize that the love of God and the power of God doesn't flow to you, it flows through you. And so, instead of looking for the right perfect person for you and, and him or her today, you need to become the right perfect person. You need to become what you are looking for and what you are looking with are the eyes of the divine. And just remind yourself as often as you can of this eternal and everlasting verity. You are divine and so is every other self upon the face of the planet. So friends, love Boy, love is really, love is a funny thing, but it is real. And Ernest Holmes, who in 1927 founded this teaching known as the science of mind, and later we added, and spirit, writes in his textbook of the same name, the science of mind, and I quote, love is more than a sentiment. It is a need, a hunger, a thirst which is perfectly natural. Anyone who thinks he can love and be happy, can live and be happy without it, does not really know what he's talking about, psychologically, emotionally, physiologically, or spiritually. Love is the beginning and the end, the one sentiment in nature that will not be denied. End of that Holmes quote. So friends, God is love and we must let it be and do its perfect work in and through us. No question about it. A basic spiritual principle is that there is only oneness throughout all of creation. Like it or not, you better believe that you are one with everything and everyone. And I'm going to tell you something. You see, when you meet, book up somebody and your spirit not check, it's more about you than about them. And I'm going to give you a little secret. If a, a behavior from other people shows up more than three times in your life, take a stop, call hall breaks, and look at yourself. It is an indication from the universe, because remember, you know, everything and everybody in your world is a reflection of what? Your consciousness. And till my dying day, I remember Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden standing at this lectern and saying, when you look in the mirror, if you're here and I look good, don't comb the mirror. What you do? Work on yourself. And every Sunday morning before she left that prayer room, she stopped and she looked in the mirror. And I find myself doing it too. Not out of vanity, 
but just to say, let me see what my people are going to see. Let me see what I'm going to present for God today. How am I going to show up for God? And it, is, uh, it was an important part of her ministry, and I have taken a page out of her book. Let us affirm together, because I am a divine child of God, I accept and revere the divinity in others. Together, because I am a divine child of God, I accept and revere the divinity in others. In a half voice, because I am a divine child of God, I accept and revere the divinity in others. In a whisper, because I am a divine child of God, I accept and revere the divinity in others. And now, in your heart, You feel the change of energy? It's just amazing. When you accept the higher image of who you are, my friends, when you relate to others from the awareness that you are a spiritual being, you no longer relate to yourself as a creature whose satisfaction is derived purely from physical pleasure. You stop relating to others in terms of their physical appearance or their behavior and are able to express, res re express respect kindness, love, and compassion to everyone. In our um, Paris and Pleasures of Public Speaking class, or maybe it was on, on Thursday, I can't remember which. I think it was on Thursday. It was in our Thursday class last week, um, 10 Secrets of Success and, and Inner Peace. One of the participants said, how do I, um, my paraphrase, love the person that gets on my last nerve. I want to, to know how, how do I put that aside. And you know the secret, my friends, is that it's, it, I've, it, I've lived with it since Thursday because it happens to me too. We need to look at that person and say, or those people, and say, this is God's work of heart. This is a magnificent creation of the master who can make no mistakes. And this is how these peculiarities, these idiosyncrasies, these behaviors, this way of dressing, whatever it is that we don't resonate with, was intended by the creator for this particular soul to learn whatever they have come here to learn and to be and to do whatever they have come here to be and to do. And when you change the way you look at the people who you don't resonate with, they begin to change in your eyes. They may begin to change too, because as you know, when you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at people, they show up differently in your life. I never forget years ago when I just first came here, Reverend Emma told me a story about an old lady walking down um, Hopefield Avenue at, at sunset with her bag of groceries, two bags of groceries, one in each hand. And she became aware of a young man walking close behind her. So she stopped under the street light and turned and said, come here, young man. I'm an old lady. Help me with these two bags. And I just live down the road. And she handed them to him and turned her back and walked. And he followed her and she went to her gate. And she, it, those days you had a a pedestrian gate, she opened the pedestrian gate and she walked up the garden path and he walked up behind her and she went, put her key in the door and she opened it and she said, put them on the dining table for me, let me look in my purse and see if I have a money to give you. And he said, it's all right, mother, just give me a blessing. <laughs> now, she will never know what his original intention was, but you know, friends, people show up how you expect them to show up. And so, this idea of people and life mirroring back to you is so powerful. I can tell you that to people who are angry, everybody else in the world look like them vexed too. And to people who have a loving, open heart, everybody seems to be friendly and wonderful and um, just, just there for you to enjoy and, f and, and, and for you to go through life together on a song and a, with a, a prayer of praise on your lips that you happen to meet on life's path. Life is indeed a mirror. And if you don't look good, don't comb the mirror.
No, I'm not going to say to you that because you are taking this, this attitude and working on or practicing the new commandment that you are not going to have people that you don't resonate with. There will be people who, who are angry with you or who you are angry with. There may even be relationships in which there is abuse and you don't have to put up with that. Even when there is abuse and, and you have to, to walk away from a relationship, make a choice to terminate that, you can do that and still see the God in the person and still love not what they have done or are doing, but love the fact that the creator made them and you can look past what they're doing, it changes the anger and the depression and the sorrow that you may be feeling. Practice seeing the God, seeing Christ to Christ, like face to face, seeing Christ to Christ with everybody you meet. And so, someone sent me an amusing anecdote about a grandfather at the supermarket. Um, he was there with his small grandson who was, you know, how children can act up. So the picnic was taking things off the shelf and throwing them in the, in, the, in the shopping trolley. And the grandfather was putting them back on the shelf so the child was screaming and carrying on. And the lady just heard him very quietly saying, it's okay, William, it's all right. We'll soon be home. We, this, won't, this, 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 this will soon be over and we'll be on our way. And so this went on up one aisle and down the other. And eventually at the cashier, the child was tossing things on the floor, and the, the grandpa just said, just be calm, William, just, just stay calm. You'll soon be on the way home. So she followed him, or she didn't follow him, she went out into the car park where, um, when she had checked her groceries, and there he was getting into his car with this obstreperous little picnic. And she said, I have to really commend you for your restraint and your patience and your equanimity and you know the calmness with which you handled um, th this child she said to him you know William is very lucky to have a grandpa like you he said thank you very much ma'am but my name is William the, li the little wretch named Kevin Just keep calm, William, you soon reach home. <laughs> In a book by author Gerald Jampolsky, titled Out of the Darkness into the Light, he writes, and I quote, we withhold love from ourselves by denying it. We think that there is something out there in the external world that we need, and we begin to get upset when we don't get it. We try to control people. We try to manipulate them and live a life where there is a lot of attack, a lot of saying, I'm right and you're wrong, unquote. People don't realize that in the battle, the battle we see is the, in the external world is really an internal battle within our own minds. Jampolsky makes the point that problems in relationships usually escalate, and this is so important, when the spiritual element is absent. You see, when I do marriage counseling, that is one of the things that I, I, I really try to emphasize. There has to be a spiritual element in your union because when you feel separate from your source, you begin to be fearful and to see everything as competition or as a threat to your own security and your own safety. And so when this happens, you really begin to treat love like a commodity which you only, you only share with a select few of your inner circle and withhold it from the rest of the world. And when you do that, my friends, you are withholding the love from yourself. Just imagine if an artist or a, a sculptor or um, a painter or a, some artist decided not to create anymore because they felt that if they continued creating, the person or persons that they are in an argument with or in enmity with would also get to enjoy their work. That's like cementing over your front garden because you don't want your neighbor to enjoy the flowers. You, in Jamaica, we say you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. So the truth is, love is flowing out from God through us 
and we must not block the flow. So, the good news is that love is intrinsic. You can't create it and you can't stop it. Sometimes we bottle it up. We put layers and layers of protective coatings around our heart. And then what happens? We are the ones that have sclerosis, hardening of the arteries. So we need to soften and to open up. And to set our intention to soften and open and allow love to shine through us. I want us to do a little exercise right now that, that is a practice for that. I want you just to think of someone in, in your life whom you love dearly. Just br bring somebody to mind who you really love. And now gently close your eyes and for a moment feel the love that fills you when you think of him or her. Now, let that love beam out from you in a complete circle, like the halo around a candle or a bright light. Just see that love emanating from you and imagine it radiating from the space where you are right now, blessing everyone and everything in its path. And now take a deep breath and open your eyes, feeling wonderful. We're back? Good. When we let the warmth of our love flow out from us in a complete circle, it engulfs everyone. It doesn't exclude anything. It fills the entire world, and especially your immediate world, making it a better place. So meet people Christ to Christ and allow that love to do its perfect work in your life. And so I want to give you your assignment. Your assignment is a very simple assignment, but it's a very pleasurable one. Tomorrow at midday, I'd like you to pause at 12 noon from whatever you're doing, take a deep breath, and intone the sound, ah, like this. Ah, let's all do it together. Ah, ah is the universal sound of the heart. It's the song of the heart. And I want us to pause tomorrow wherever we are at noon and just do it at, you at noon, your time. No matter to try and do the time, the time change. Set your, 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 your devices to, to beep at, at noon for you and just take a deep breath and intone ah six times. Let us do it now. And when you're finished intoning, just say, I choose love. So let us, let's do it at our own pace. Six. Take a deep breath. Ah. Out loud. Ah. 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 I choose love. How does it feel? I hope your neighbors don't think. <laughs> Let them think. It's the sound of the heart. The song of the heart. And so that universal, non-denominational heart sound does, has a very powerful effect when it's done in concert with other people. Dr. Ernest Holmes, to conclude, writes, quote, love alone shall discover the heart of God at the heart of every human. Love alone shall reveal the self to the self and find enthroned in the high citadel of the secret place of God in our own heart that beneficence which enhances and embraces the whole world. My friends, may that love be the heart of your way and the way of your heart in all the fullness and beauty of its expression this week. Namaste. I choose love. Oh. Thank you, Reverend John. What a wonderful.
a timely message. You know, some songs came to my mind during that encouragement, like Cynthia Sloss's You Look Like Love. Yes, <laughs> <lovely. laughs> <You know? laughs> and also Alicia Keys' Make Love, Not Holy War. You know, and um, finally, I radiate the love that comes from deep within my being. Yeah, wonderful encouragement, Reverend John, to <clears throat> love each other. You know, the, and this is our encouragement, which is so timely, given some of what is happening in some places in the world, is to keep our hearts open and to still see the divine in everyone, separate and apart from whatever activity they may have engaged in. Thank you, Reverend John. <laughs>